Hey guys, Grant here from Classic Games. Just want to give you a real quick update on some of the features that we're working on right now on StarCraft Remastered. But before I do that, I want to thank you guys for all the feedback that you've been giving us in the forums, uh, telling us about the things that you like and what you don't like, uh, so the issues we need to fix. Uh, that really helps us know what's going on in the community. So uh, please keep it up, and we're definitely listening to everything that you're saying. So, matchmaking 1v1. Uh, it's awesome to see so many people that have jumped in and given matchmaking a go. We've had millions of matches made already in just uh, over six weeks of StarCraft Remastered being live. Um, so it's, it's awesome to see so many people playing the, the global matchmaker. Uh, the nature of the global matchmaker does mean we're saying, seeing some issues of latency and we've been doing a lot of work on that over the last few weeks to try and reduce that as much as possible. Just recently, we doubled the number of proxy servers that we're using in Korea, and we've already seen some improvements based on that. Uh, we've made a number of other server-side improvements, and very recently, you guys all participated in a turn rate experiment, which we did, which helped us nail down what was a pretty good happy medium turn rate of 10. Um, but that said, we want to run in the best, in the fastest turn rate we can for the connection. So to that end, we'll be rolling out a dynamic turn rate system uh, coming soon. And that will mean that the game will run in the highest possible turn rate that it can for a connection. And if the connection has too much latency, it'll keep dropping down to a turn rate um, that, that makes sense for that connection. So that's something to look forward to coming soon. And we think that will alleviate a lot of the issues that we're seeing in the global matchmaker as far as latency is concerned. Uh, one thing I want to talk about really quickly is the disconnecting that we saw happening, uh, which is uh, seems like it's no longer happening, or certainly uh, a lot less. Uh, people were disconnecting before the end of a game when it looked like they were going to lose in order to not take the loss, and it was also unfortunately preventing the winner from, from getting a win. That's now been fixed uh, about a week ago, and the winners are getting their win. Uh, the guy who disconnects gets the loss and a disconnect stat, so it's a pretty powerful disincentive for people to uh, to do this disconnect uh, drop thing before they before they lose. Uh, so as I said, we've seen a lot less of that, and I would expect that that to be the case in the future. So still on the topic of matchmaking, I want to talk about two v two and group matchmaking, which is certainly something that a few of you guys are really interested in, and that has certainly been something that's been on our radar from the very beginning of Remastered. We do need to think a bit more about uh, group matchmaking though, for a couple of reasons. One of which is the pool size. Do we have a large enough pool size to sustain a 2v2, 3v3, 4v4 uh, matchmaking experience? Um, or, is, or is that going to, the small pool size going to devalue the experience a little bit? Uh, and probably more importantly, the, importantly are the latency issues that we're seeing uh, in 1v1. They're only going to be exacerbated in 2v2, 3v3 and 4v4 due to the nature of the turn-locked um, client-host networking uh, infrastructure that StarCraft has. So I think we need to come up with a bit of a better solution for that before we start tackling uh, matchmaking 2v2. So for that reason, I would see 2v2, 3v3, 4v4 as more of a long-term feature rather than anything that we're going to get to in the short term. Dynamic lighting or real-time lighting. Um, one of the aspects of dynamic lighting is that it uh, does take a lot of VRAM, and particularly when in a high-res 2D game like StarCraft Remastered, that naturally requires a lot of VRAM, and dynamic lighting requires a whole bunch more uh, VRAM. So one thing that we've been working really hard on is trying to bring that down as much as possible. And I don't want to make any promises here about what we can do, but that's something we're investigating, and if we can do something, then uh, we'll hope to see that roll out in a, a patch very soon. Again, no promises, but we're trying to bring that down to uh, two gigs so that people who have two gig of VRAM uh, will hopefully be able to experience the real-time lighting as well. CCMU, sprite limit, bullet limit. I posted about this in the forums recently and I got a bunch of feedback. Um, this is certainly something we want to do. We just wanted to make sure that you guys were okay with it, uh, that you didn't think it was going to break anything in terms of gameplay, because that's certainly we're, com we're committed to not breaking gameplay. So I put that out there to see if uh, you guys thought there were any problems with that. And it seems like overwhelmingly the feedback has been, look, it's fine to uh, raise or eliminate the limits as far as uh, the bullets and the, and the sprites and the CCMU goes. Uh, so I, I see no reason why we shouldn't uh, move forward with that, uh, probably in the midterm future. And, uh, but if anyone does have a, a, a problem with this in terms of gameplay, now's the time to jump in that thread and give us your feedback. The final thing I want to talk about today is EUD. Um, in, 
in 118, we kind of left EUD behind. Uh, that's because we introduced some strong anti-cheat and tamper-proof measures uh, to prevent people from cheating in uh, games of StarCraft. And obviously, uh, this is the right thing to do. Uh, we want to protect the integrity of the game and, and, and make sure it's a fun experience for everyone. We don't want people cheating. But it did kind of leave behind EUD, and um, that, that made us a little sad because we like the idea that people can experience StarCraft in whatever way they want to. And if that's playing EUD maps, well, that's fine. Um, unfortunately, we can't release a game into the public with a security hole in it, so these are the reasons why we've continually patched out EUD over the years. Um, supporting every EUD offset would be a, a mountain of work, and so it's probably not something that's ever going to be possible. But what we have been doing, we've had a very talented engineer here at Blizzard working on enabling some of the EUD offsets again. And right now, in Remastered, we have uh, a very popular tower defense map working 100% uh, complete. So that is kind of the start of EUD for us. And again, in the midterm future, you can expect to see this map rolling out, this map being whitelisted and, and, and us saying it's now okay to play this, this map. And uh, we'd love to hear from you guys as to what maps you're playing and what maps are popular. And uh, we'll see what we can do about uh, once we make sure there's no security holes and seeing if we can actually emulate them successfully. Uh, we'll see if we can uh, whitelist those maps going forward. So again, we'll never do every EUD offset and support every EUD map, but this is certainly the start of us bringing back uh, some measure of EUD. And uh, I know there's gonna be a b whole bunch of folks out there that are gonna be very excited about that. So that's all I've got time for today. Um, keep talking to us in the forums. We're definitely listening. We don't have time to respond to every comment or, or every question, but we are certainly listening to you guys. And um, we plan to do more of these video updates in the future. So uh, thanks for listening and uh, I'll, I'll see you soon.